you do, Kristen? I'm not. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not. Well, our invoice is due through March 20th, 2024, to be paid on March 13th, 2024, for $783,496.32. The breakdown is as follows, with 63.03% being funded by the general fund at $493,839.32. 0.98% is funded by Act 13 grants at $7,700. 11.34% is being funded by other grants and pass through monies at $88,814.46. 18.84% is being funded by RMS at $147,583.63. And 5.81% is being funded by escrow at $45,558.91. Okay, any questions? A motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All on third side? Aye. 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 And next I have presented for your ratification is a special check run for Bob Boo First Choice Realty for the purchase of 110 Hill Alley in Georgia Shore, PA, in the amount of $5,000 for payment on March 8th. Okay, motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. And this is for the property that we're purchasing for the uh, District Justice Building. In the Jersey Shore area. Okay. All fair side? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, information items. Amy, update on the uh, library system. Morning, Amy. Good morning, Commissioners. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, how are you? Good thank you. Good. Um, so first of all, I want to uh, thank you for giving me a few minutes on the agenda today. Um, as you know, I'm Amy Rush. I'm the system administrator for the Lycoming County Library System, and I'm the chief executive officer and director of the James B. Brown Library. I brought a few handouts for you. You know I love a handout, and I do have some extras for anyone else that wants one afterwards. Um, to begin, uh, I also want to introduce a couple of people in the audience today that are here to support um, the Lycoming County Library System. 
Um, so first I have Diana, who is the president of the board, um, and she represents um, the Jersey Shore Public Library. I have Larry Stout, um, who is the treasurer of the LCLS board, and he represents the Montgomery Area Public Library. I have Dennis Carell, who is also on the LCLS board, and he represents the Conkle Memorial Library. John Comfer, who is on the LCLS board and the James B. Brown Library board. And today with me, I brought um, the assistant director for the James B. Brown Library, Robin Dejirasu. So thank you again. And with, without further ado, I'll jump right in. Um, before I begin talking about what member libraries have accomplished this year, um, I want to take a moment to thank the county commissioners for their support of library service. Um, the Lycoming County Library System saved residents over $8 million in 2023 with checking out of physical materials. Now this doesn't even include digital material checkouts, which as you can see in the handout, um, are vast. Um, those are processed through a separate software, so we don't have that data. Um, but we had 68,000 digital checkout materials and um, 644,000 physical checkouts. So each of those materials gets a dollar amount assigned to it, what it would cost you if you were to go and buy it yourself. And that's how we gather that data. Um, and uh, the return on investment for that, uh, for the county's investment is over 400%, which I think is really fantastic and it shows how um, vitally important library of service is to um, our constituents. We also recently unveiled a new system-wide library card. <coughs> I did bring it today, um, so you can see if you go to one of the LCLS libraries, you can get this new card to replace your old card, or if you are a new card holder, you can get this card, and it can be used at any of the locations in Lycoming County. Um, so that would include Hughesville, James B. Brown, Jersey Shore, Conkle, M Montgomery, and Muncie. So it's really exciting that um, we're trying to show constituents that they can go anywhere in the county and get high quality library service. Um, coming up in the next few months, we have a lot of great partnerships going on. We're working with the BLAST IU17 on a regional initiative um, called Remake Learning Days. And um, on the back of one of the handouts that I gave you, it shows you um, that every single library in our county is participating. So this is a partnership um, where libraries, schools, child care centers, and more um, promote engaging and creative educational experiences for youth. So um, there are 22 programs in a 21-day period. So there's something for children almost every day. Um, and uh, the themes for this, these programs are arts, maker, outdoor learning, science, technology, and youth voice. Um, James B. Brown is hosting seven programs. Um, with four community partners. Hughesville is hosting two programs, Conkle is hosting one, Jersey Shore is hosting one, and Montgomery is hosting six programs, and the Muncie Library is hosting five programs. So we're really excited about all of these different programs and opportunities for the youth in our communities. And um, when we're talking about what's coming next, uh, we're really excited for Summer Learning 2024. And the basis of this year's theme is um, Adventure Begins at the Library. So we're really excited about this because every member library is hosting Forgotten Friends Reptile Sanctuary. Apparently last year they brought a very big snake and the children loved it. So we're excited that they're coming to all six locations this year. And we're also collaborating um, with FCFP to do a Rider Park um, program called S'mores and Storytelling, I think is the name in progress, and all member libraries are participating in that initiative and partnership. Um, so it's going to be a full day of events and things for families, kids, teens to do out in nature. So we're really excited um, to remind our users that the adventure begins with the library and extends out into the community. Um, we really think that it's vitally important that the library supports the educational goals of all of our users all year long. We provide a lot of great opportunities for learning, programs, services, whatever their needs are, libraries do their best to support those needs. Um, and we work together uh, in our system to provide these um, opportunities for our residents. Um, and in the pamphlet I shared, there are additional highlights um, for the quarterly review. And some of those highlights are 
Hughesville Area Public Library participated in Take Your Child to the Library Day, and they had 31 attendees, which if you've been in the Hughesville Library, is a lot of people in a really small space. So it was really fantastic. It was a drop-in event, and um, they're planning to do it again soon. The James B. E. Brown Library saw 17,000 patrons at the main building in January and February <coughs> and processed 417 passports. And our outreach vehicles, which I mentioned at the last meeting that I attended, um, we have three outreach vehicles. They circulated 22,000 items in the past two months. Um, the library is also hosting a Kids Safe Symposium with Pennsylvania House of Representative um, Janie Flick and the Lycoming County Coroner's Office. We're really excited for that partnership on May 11th from 10.30 to 2. The Conca Memorial Library is um, really focusing on their toddler time and their preschool story and craft hour programs. And those have been very successful and they're expanding their reach of programs for um, the next few months. Uh, and since the beginning of the year, Montgomery Area Public Library has welcomed over 3,000 visitors which is huge, and they've had 18 new library card holders. The Jersey Shore Public Library recently logged two new databases, um, including Hoopla, which gives patrons on-demand access to movies, music, TV, um, comics, all kinds of good things right on their digital device. Um, and one of the things that we're most proud of in our system is that we feel that we have something for everyone. Um, and. Uh, I think I gave you a lot of information. I do apologize for that. Um, but I obviously love our libraries, and I hope that you do too. Um, at this time, I'll take any questions. Super. Yeah, thank you for being here. Well, thank you again so much, and um, we hope to see you at a library soon. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Would anybody else from your board like to have a word oh. to say? Dennis? Maureen? Thanks. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few yeah, words. Good morning, absolutely. gentlemen. Good morning. As you know, I'm Dennis Carell, current volunteer board president for uh, and treasurer, vice, excuse me, vice president treasurer for Contra Library. Previous president, we had some shuffling of uh, some board members, and so I have uh, stepped down and have moved to the treasurer position because that's really what uh, my background is as far as finances. So I will continue to serve in that capacity. Thank you for allowing us to come today to uh, express our appreciation uh, as volunteers and, uh, in our community to share with you just a few things that are happening at our libraries. And uh, Amy certainly hit on uh, most of those, so I will not go over those again. Uh, but as some of you know, we have finalized a major capital campaign and we've done a major refresh of our organization. And some of you have already been there to see that. For those who haven't, we encourage you to uh, find some time to come see it. Uh, it's truly phenomenal what uh, has happened for the Montoya community. Um, the previous damage measures, which include uh, Metzger, uh, assisted us in that campaign with 2021 county funds. So again, expressing our appreciation uh, for that commitment. <coughs> uh, something that big has not occurred to our uh, library since 1963 when they moved to that building. So 60 years later, uh, the uh, volunteer board had a new vision for what, uh, what the library should look like, and we made that happen, and now we've secured a building from roof to basement that everything will last, and there okay, should be no issues, because everything is new. Okay? Uh, so I say it'll be now for the next generation to take care of it. Uh, today's focus um, is about what you do for all of us, you know, we're independent libraries in our communities, Jersey Shore, Muncie, Montgomery, Hughesville, and of course, James Reed Brown, and we each serve our own constituency, but even all patrons are free to move to any library that they wish. Uh, when I spoke to this group back in November 21, I shared some numbers, which are continue to be impressive, uh, and Amy has highlighted them in her uh, particular brochure that she has created for us, which is excellent. Uh, but how we exponentially take the dollars that you give us and expand that. So for the Compa Library, uh, for every dollar you allocated to us, we turned that into $13.2. So we were able to take that $1 with an increased benefit all across uh, our constituency. I don't know of any other program that can say that they have that kind of rate of return with the money that you're uh, putting forth. They might, and I don't know what those are, but I take great pride that we're able to do that as a system. Uh, 
The use of the funds is a clear demonstration of how we take the money and multiply it for the benefit of all of our residents. Uh, your libraries are a driving force for all of our patrons, both to our current residents and to those moving into our community. They see the library as a resource, and we see that all the time with new library card holders are coming in, uh, saying, I just moved to the area, now I want to get to know the library, because it's important for them and their family. <coughs> Uh, from the volunteers and friends of the library uh, and our staff alone, we have nine employees, 24 uh, volunteers. Uh, you need to know what you do by helping us is making a difference uh, to the residents of Lycoming County. And I, as a patron and all the other patrons, uh, really appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for being here, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to action items. Jamie, are you filling in for Kristen? I am not. Oh, Kristen. <laughs> okay. Um, is there something I can help with? What do we got? Well, I'm showing uh, three items for Kristen. Somebody just sure. called in. Is that her? Yep, it's me. I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> okay. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Uh, so the first action item on your agenda is... the ARPA funds. Correct. Yep. Okay. I have a motion. <coughs> I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Commissioner? Oh, aye. Sorry. Thank you. is a budget revision certification in the amount of $4,677.14. This is for 2020 CDBG funds for Montoursville Borough. Uh, there were remaining funds in the John Doring Municipal Building Removal of Architectural Barriers Project um, being reallocated to the Phase 4 for curb cuts. Okay, motion. I'll make the motion. i second. All fair side? Aye. 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 Next submitted for your approval is the subrecipient agreement with West Branch Regional Authority. Um, this is for 2019 CDBG funds, and this is for the sewer lateral reconstruction project. Um, there is an incorrect amount here that was on the attachment for the agreement. The amount should be $36,055.63. That amount is in the subrecipient agreement itself. It was just incorrect on the attachment. I did bring um, updated attachments with that number um, for you today as well. Um, and that is, uh, as I stated, for the sewer lateral reconstruction project. So if you want to do that, yes, I have a copy for everybody here. 
<laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Yep. We need to do anything to adjust the agenda. Like, and this was the amount that it always was? This is the revised amount. Um, it is, and like I said, it is correct in the $36,055.63 is in the actual subrecipient agreement that will be signed. So um, if it's an agenda, it's, it's not. It, yes, but the attachment in the original um, subrecipient agreement had the $50 amount in it. Oh. And this is the um, attachment that should have been with that agreement. So I would do an amendment to revise the agenda first. Okay. I have a motion to amend the agenda item with the current figure. Yes, I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any public comment on that? Hearing none. Okay. And we need a motion to pass it. A motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. One more on here for you. And the final uh, submitted for your approval is the subrecipient agreement with Franklin Township uh, in the amount of $42,762.63. This is for 2021 CDBG funds for the um, <coughs> lateral installation project in Lairdsville. Okay. I have a motion. I'll um, make a motion. I'll second. All your side. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tony. 4.7, Krista. Morning, Krista. Morning. I'm here with the contract with Susquehanna Accounting and Consulting Solutions. This is um, hourly rates on an as-needed basis to work with the controller's office on the accounting day-to-day -day work um, to get us caught up and trained. We have three accounting positions in the office and only one accountant. We're not looking to fill the other two positions until we get 2022 financials and 2023 financials done, which the goal is by September of this year. So the money being saved currently with those two open positions would be spent on this contract. Um, Susquehanna has been used by Lycoming County in the past. They do have experience and proven um, work in the governmental sector. So I think what we're bringing in, we have, is a known entity. And can, they can hit ground running. They have experience with our financial system. So I'm looking forward to getting through this as quickly as possible. Again, our goal for 2022 is the end of April, 2023 the end of September and then we'll look to fill those other two positions and hopefully with their help get to where we need to be. That's good. For the board, Susquehanna was the accounting firm that we brought in when we had a, a bunch of turnover and yeah. one was yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. A motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. All your side. Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Kristen. Uh, 4.8. We're going to move that to the end. Uh, allow yeah. Mr. Fink to be here. Correct. Right. We'll move on to 4.9. 4.9. Ken, uh, change order. Spencer? Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, morning Ken. Ken. Before you today is a change order with Spencer Mechanical um, for some plumbing changes, um, moving some sinks around. And this is for the third floor, which is where our offices are being relocated. Right. Yes. And it is a 2024 budget. Yes. Okay. All right. Motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Ken. 4.10312, Gary. Morning, Gary. Morning. All right, the first one on here is uh, seeking your approval on participation in the Pickup Pennsylvania Initiative with PA Department of Environmental Protection. 
It's a program we get involved in every year. We've been doing it for many years. Um, different groups can sign up, keep PA beautiful, and do highway cleanups and whatnot. DEP waives their fees. Brady Township waives their fees for this trash to come in. Um, just for example, I got some number 2021. It's just for the month of April. 2021, we got 1.1 ton. 2022, 1.4, and last year was a pretty big year, 4.9 on out of this program. Well, we appreciate programs like this. I know coming to work, I see uh, this time of year, and it's going on right now. Uh, they're along the highways cleaning mm -hmm. out the garbage, um, which continues to boggle my mind why people throw their <laughs> trash out from mm -hmm. their window along the highways when there's so many receptacles that it takes an extra minute to drop off your trash from your vehicle yeah. and uh, when you get your gas, when you stop at a convenience store. And um, it's kind of disheartening to see people that just throw their trash out. Yeah. yeah. Just last year, we signed up for Delta Highway ourselves right there in front of the landfill. It's, I, mean, I think, a mile long run. And we do it, we did it in the spring and we'll do it in the fall. And you'd be amazed how much stuff we picked up. Yeah. Yeah. When you said, what was the number, four point? Uh, the last year was 4.9 times. How far and wide does that come from? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I know the entire Pennsylvania participates, but I don't know how far we what you receive. <laughs> and I would ask the public to please be careful when they see the, the highway workers out picking up the trash, that they slow down going to those areas um, so that nobody's harmed. Yeah. Because I, I see cars flying through those areas, too. And they're, I mean, they're right along the brim trying to pick up people's garbage that shouldn't be there. So, um, but it's good to have a program like this. So, I have a motion? I'll make the motion. motion. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, the next item is seeking approval to purchase a replacement tank with vacuum pump uh, from Pick Right in the amount of $77,594. Um, basically what that is, is, we have our own back truck on site that we use, rely on heavily. It's basically a truck like a hundred different trucks that comes and does your septic tank. So we use it not only for daily maintenance, we use it to transport leachate, we use it in emergency situations if a pump fails or something plugs. The tank that's on that truck is 22 years old and it's in really bad shape to the point where it could be an environmental issue if it, something were to fail. Um, the chassis on the truck is, is only a few years old. That's fine. We just want to replace the tank before it's too late. Okay. You have a motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor, sorry. Aye. All right. Next item is uh, seeking your approval to purchase of the Zwirl and windshield kit from John Zink Company in the amount of $43,600. That is, I call it a flare turndown kit, and what that is is uh, we finally got <coughs> to the point where we we're producing not only enough gas for the uh, Xterra's cogen to run a full load, we have a little extra. So we're at this balancing point where we have a little extra, but our flare can only be turned down to about 300 to 350 CFM. We got to run the engines in them. And we got to find a balancing point, and they have to back their engines down to keep their flare lit. We got to stay in compliance. We're losing revenue by doing that. This this kit, flare dirt turned down kit, I call it, will allow us to back that flame down to maybe even 100 CFM, and they can run a full load. Plus, we're destroying the extra excess gas, and it'll probably pay for itself in maybe two months with the revenues, the numbers we see. Okay, good. <coughs> Yeah, motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Point 13. Mark. What do you mark? Four. Uh, good morning. I'm requesting a vote to approve an amendment for a contract extension that we have with. Uh, uh, Urban Research and Development Corporation, known as URDC, uh, through the end of 2024. Uh, this is the consulting firm that's uh, assisting us with updating our zoning ordinance and our subdivision. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, it's 2024 budget of the motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. 2014, Malik. Good morning, Malik. Good morning. Seeking your approval for the cooperation agreement with Boys Sports Sanitary Authority in Cedicog in the amount of $500,000. This is the ARC past president, <coughs> and Jamie is on the phone to answer any questions or have additional comments. All right. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. I don't have much to add. Once we get this done, we can upload everything into the DPD's electronic app system, and then that will get DPD to give us our contract, and we'll be able to get things moving. Good news. Okay, a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Okay, I guess we'll go back to 4.8, and uh, Mr. Fink is not here, but there will be, uh, I believe there's going to be a motion to table this, um, because there's some questions yet to be answered. So I have a motion to table action item 4.8. Yeah, I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 So that's the table. Three to zero. Okay. Um. Mr. Tumman, or do you want to wait on the chiefs? Well, let's introduce our new staff member over here. Michael, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Michael. Good morning, commissioners. Michael is our new um, um, senior, senior business partner in the HR department, Correct. and uh, we want to welcome you. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to the, uh, the uh, business partner being joining us in two weeks, which is Gene and Champion. And do um, you have anything you want to add? No. Uh, day four, and it's been it's been a whirlwind. It's been great. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Mr. Have you met Jeannie yet? I have not, no. Okay. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll be excited to, All right. to meet her. She's a very outstanding lady. Excellent. Yeah. Nope, looking forward to uh, hey, getting out and uh, meeting all the departments and department heads. So. Yeah. I understand that you've met several already. I have, yes. Yeah. We're, we're sure some of you are looking at him thinking, is this really the best we could do? And the answer is yes, this is the best we could find. <laughs> um, we were actually impressed with our applicant pool. <laughs> Uh, we, we really uh, sorted through and, and it was we had some tough decisions to make but um, we were really pleased with um, both Mike's position and Gina's position because um, we, we you keep hearing through society that people are, are having a tough time finding uh, employees and even when they get applicants if they're not qualified applicants at any section of not just you know county government but in any section of society and um, we were really really pleased with the applicants we had um, we think you guys will be pleased too <coughs> with the people that we chose. Sometimes the gum on the bedpost still is flavor. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, pro that was <laughs> profound. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to use that. I'm sure you will. I'm sure <laughs> you will. <laughs> Not the gum, the cliche. <laughs> the cliche. <laughs> You'd use the gum too. But, uh, you look for food. I don't really chew gum anymore. I'm, that was a teenage thing, but. No, we were, we were, I think we were pleasantly surprised because whenever in, in this climate of, in this time of society, when you have job openings, you, you just don't know if you're going to get, um, you know, you're just hoping for one quality applicant sometime. And we had multiple and, and it really, it made our job tough, but it was a blessing because um, we really think you all will be pleased. We have been, we are pleased. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, you seem to like to put out there, if you have any meads that, that you have donuts or food available, he would be welcome an invitation. Just having snacks at meetings is a benefit. I don't, it just ups the morale. Do you disagree? See, I have legal counsel on my side. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right, thanks, thank you. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Welcome on board. Thank you. Welcome. All right, uh, Mr. Fink, on the uh, item 4.0, uh, uh, the commissioners have voted on that Four. table. Sorry, not 4.9. 4.8. Or 4.8, I'm sorry. Uh, it's being tabled at this moment. Okay. Uh, there's some questions that need to be answered first. Okay. So uh, we'll talk to you afterwards about ranging the meeting and getting those questions answered. 
Okay. Any other commissioner's comments? I don't. I don't. Okay. Oh, now I do have one. Um, for those, uh, Raise the Region is now. Um, they had the, the kickoff event last night. Mark and I were there. And, um, you know, it's just a, a, there's so many quality uh, nonprofit organizations in our world, in our region, and uh, this is their big push. So if you have uh, causes that you are that are near and dear to you, don't forget Raise the Region. Uh, they've made it very technologically easy to contribute. Um, and also, if you have, if you're looking for tax deductions and, and don't know where to put them, um, these are certainly places that you can get your deduction and, and also help our community. So they do a wonderful job, and the numbers keep going up and up. I think wasn't did they raise four? Can't remember how many million last year. But it keeps Every going year, up and up. It was yeah, two million. Over two. Two, okay. Two point three. Yeah. And um, and there are so many worthy causes. If you've never looked at the list, there's uh, there's like three hundred. Okay. So so you can certainly find something that is uh, that moves you. Um, so just don't forget about. It. I think it runs through midnight. Midnight tonight. Midnight tonight. So um, you so all just, your phone. Just a reminder of that. Yeah. I was looking down through the organizations last night, and. Uh, Fantastic organizations throughout, the, not just our county, but several counties. And um, so, mm -hmm. pretty much, if you wanted to donate or something there, I'm sure it'll interest you. Yeah. Um, I'd like to just take a minute to and uh, send condolences out to the Dempsey family. Tom Dempsey was our state representative for many years, uh, did an excellent job back in his day, and uh, he passed away this past week. So, and the police services are Monday. 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 Thank you. Uh, public comment. Yes. I ask you to please keep your comments, uh, county issues, and keep them brief, please. Thank you. Uh, Larry Sout, and I am uh, representing my community uh, in that. Just as a comment on um, four point eight, it's it's timber run, not not timer run. Uh, but that literally is my backyard. I mean, it's, it's, I can throw a stone and hit it. I mean, it's very, very close. And just, just a 60 second, you know, kind of just, it would be helpful for the neighbors to know what is going on down there because that, that we, we see it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a reality. And um, we have, I think, a fantastic relationship with the landfill. I mean, they are they are extremely um, I don't know, just nice. I mean, they let us know about things, and uh, and and uh, Digger and all those. I mean, they, we've had we've had okay, but um, I know this is going to be a big project, and it's going to be and it's a different kind of project. Uh, and all we know is rumors, and if as we learned last week, rumors can go all over the place. So we don't want that to happen. So. If you could just kind of, I don't know how, but just, just let us know uh, that, that are directly in that area. And there are some, I mean, um, more important than Larry Stout type people uh, that yeah. like healing lives right along the air too. You know? I mean, it's, it's, there's some heavy hitters. So I just, just in a nice way, just kind of commenting, it would be nice to know what, what might be on the agenda. Anyway, Absolutely. that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Do we want to let Do we want to let Jason be on record? Uh, yeah, when he gets done here. Tom, you come up first. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Adams Williams. Good morning. Uh, just want to say, if I could live at the library, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> And I can get there early. <laughs> you get in there, you get lost. I mean, there's so much stuff. It's fantastic. And uh, so we really got to keep make sure we keep going. It's healthy. It's great. Um, First Timothy 5 6 says, But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. And that's referring, and he's, he's talking about widows and, you know, getting into that. But I thought about that, and I'm kind of looking at America. That's kind of have that feeling that America's lives so much in pleasure 
that we're kind of dead what's really important. And it, and it kind of goes into the um, editorial in yesterday's paper with the woman um, about her two boys at the party, you know, and the, and the, and the gun and the kid being shot. And, um, and she says, uh, we really need to turn back to God. And of course we do, you know. And we need to find ways to get them back in our education system. Not everyone will agree with that, but you can look back on history and say, well, when he was there, we had a lot better society. And it's not about forcing religion on people, but, but getting people to realize that you have to answer to someone eventually, and it's not just yourself. Because when we left our own devices, this is what we, this is where we're at, and it's not going to get better until we really uh, fix that. Um, I think part of the problem is I see uh, Governor Shapiro wants to push on the climate change stuff, and if you really study this stuff, really look at the science in, the, in that, um, they're causing a lot of fear, and it's no wonder a lot of kids today have issues, you know, um, and they get afraid. That, it's like checking little skies falling and it's not. Um, there's only a certain amount of uh, heating that carbon dioxide will actually cause because of water absorption in the atmosphere, but it's water vapor that causes is 90% of you know cause of any warming. And there's nothing to do about that. We're getting water coming in from outer space constantly from ice that com comes through the atmosphere plus space dust. And um, but the climate, the, the whole mechanism is, is too complex. So, so I think, and the point of this is, as, as parents and as uh, adults, we really want to give our kids <coughs> not to be afraid so they can have resources to really look at and start really thinking about, you know, is this, are we going to kill ourselves? Because all these, all these climate models that we've heard for the last 30 years, none of them can pan out, not one of them. And, um, it's, it's creating fear, and it's, it's a big market. It's a, really, actually, it's a money laundering system is what it is. You have these center nonprofits, and they get in with government agencies, and the government agencies give them money, and the, and the people do these, especially renewables, they're involved on those boards at the same time, and it's, and it's, and it's just turning money back and forth, and it's taken, and it's taken out, of the, out of the taxpayers and out of the real economic system. Um, but there's some real good resources. Uh, Dr. Richard Linson, you can look him up. Uh, Gregory Whitestone, the CO2 Coalition, Commonwealth Foundation, and uh, let's see, the Heartland Institute. There's just a few people, top-notch scientists, that won't, they're not, they're not there to promote anything. They're not getting paid by any government or organizations or anything. That They're mostly charity, you know, and, and they have to, have their own business too to stay afloat. But uh, when when uh, truth or when things are subsidized by government, and then you're guaranteed to get funding because you're going to research this one thing, you're not going to fight that if if you want to keep that job. You know, there's been a lot of scientists that have said we're not going to we're not going to say anything. We agree with with these doc, with these scientists what they're saying. But, we're not going to go against because we'll lose, lose our jobs, you know, and that's just just false. I mean, it's bad. bad. There's some things to research. We really want to give our kids real hope, you know, and, and to see that uh, education and everything we need to really look at. And since this is Women's History Month, I had a fifth grade teacher, and that's what she drilled into our head, you know. Look, you know, and, and don't just go along with the crowd and, and um, don't use her head for nothing but a hat rack. You know, and, and just don't take everything at face value. Really look at it and really think. Because there's one thing, if what they're saying is true, where are the people dying on the streets if, with all this, you know, all the terrible things that are supposed to have been happening? And they keep saying about the, the ice melting, well, it freezes too, you know. Anyway, thanks. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Jason, would you like to make any statements regarding that? If I, I'm, I'm not up to speed on why you <coughs> tabled it or anything. Yeah, we just stuff. tabled the item and action item itself. Okay. But are you are you able to share what the oh, project I, I is? I've shared with you guys before about what yeah, they're looking at doing. I mean, it's not. <laughs> no, I think they're for public. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, well, first of all, um, the LOI is to provide them the opportunity to do their due diligence <coughs> on the property because it, it 
I mean, they're not going to just buy the property sight unseen. Um, while they've looked at the property, they've not done soil testing or anything else to see what load bearing factors are in place for it. So that's the whole content of this. If the property does meet their needs, then they would want to then engage in a sale of the property. Um, their intent is to put in a manufacturing operation larger than what they have here in Williamsport. Uh, and what they're looking at doing is putting in uh, equipment that would be able to be used. Part of this is being driven by the electric vehicle battery market. And uh, let me be very clear on the fact that they're not looking at doing anything battery related. Um, however, there are, there's a, an aluminum foil that's involved with that and they are looking specifically to produce aluminum foil for the EV battery market. Um, currently, all of that is being produced overseas. This would, from what they've shared with me, this would be the first, um, first plant in the US that would be producing this product. So that's what they're looking at doing. And it's like an expansion of where they're at right now yeah, I mean, they're going to continue uh, doing what they're doing over here. They just put in, to be honest with you, uh, or let you know. Williamsport. Yeah, here in Williamsport, up on uh, the old JW aluminum plant, right. uh, and off of Trenton Avenue. What they, uh, they actually just uh, put in some new equipment. They had some state assistance, which was announced earlier, uh, I should say last year, um, and they've got the equipment in there. And they're expanding into their second shift, which that was part of what they said. So they're they're growing, um, and they're looking at investing here um, if everything works out with the property. Again, that's not. I mean, they still have to have the opportunity once the LOI. If it, if you all decide to enact the LOI, uh, then they need to go through their due diligence. Okay. So the operation is different than the current old JW Aluminum. Well, I mean, there's, they, they produce thin foil aluminum product here. They also, some of the new equipment that they brought in has allowed them to do some larger thickness. Um, and please don't test me on all that aspect of it. Yeah, I know you would. Um, but uh, it, it's, uh, from, from what they're, they've shared with me, uh, this would be within the, definitely within their wheelhouse of what they're doing right now. It's just a specialty product. Now, I'm assuming that it will also be applicable to other things as well, uh, from what they've shared. But again, that's primarily what's being driven right now. So, and, and I will decide for my metallurgy. Opportunity for close to 300 jobs or more. Uh, that's, what, that's what they've shared with us at, at this time. So, you know, yeah. Thank you. and they've, they've hit everything already with regards to their requirements with the state for the uh, funding that they got all here already. So, I mean, with their expansion into a second shift, they're, they're a good quality company. Um, we've been real pleased with uh, everything they've invested here. So. Is there a, is there a uh, size of the building you're allowed to disclose? Uh, to answer I, I, like any of the residents' questions that are looking over an empty field today? Yeah, no, I mean, at this point in time, uh, they, they need to understand really what the space is actually gonna be. While it's 200 plus acres, I think that's over there, you can't build on all 200 right. of that property. And they really want to understand what it is to see if what they're they're thinking about doing there is going to be that. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief. So, I just, if I could make a quick response to yeah. one of Tom's comments. Um, just about going back and educationally going back. And there's a, there's a danger in looking back Longingly, like everything was always better back then, and it, you know it wasn't. We've clearly advanced as a society in many aspects. Um, you know, Billy Joel has a verse in one of his songs that says, "The good old days weren't always good, and tomorrow ain't as bad as it seems." And there are certain groups that can look back and, and longingly, but there are certain groups that look back and, and society was worse to them. And you know, we think of people of color or LGBTQ, but just you talked about your fifth grade teacher. We don't have to go back very far in our history when they, women couldn't even vote. So um, we, we do societally, there are certain groups that longingly look back like everything was better back then and that's just, for some groups it might have been, but there are lots of groups that it wasn't. Well, I don't, I don't mean to give that impression that everything was better in the past. Every, every
every generation has its big challenges and everyone has their challenges. But when you look back on history, you have to look at the people that came through those challenges. Like I gave you the um, example of Frederick Douglass, you know, back when, you know, from the Civil War, escaped slave. He learned what the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were really about. He was lied to. He said they were um, enslaving documents, especially because of the Three-Fifths Clause. And he realized that was a lie because later on in his life, he said, no, it's, it's the best document ever written. Well, we get, I, I mean, we're, we're here for county business. We don't need American yeah, history no, lessons. But you, I just wanted to say in general to your comment, sure. um, it's, it's, it's just dangerous to think that, you know, History was always better than it is today because that's not true. I try not to give that impression at all. But okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, anybody else from the audience? Yes, sir. Morning. 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 Uh, I spoke at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the first time I ever publicly spoke. And uh, I have some regrets, <laughs> the words that I used in trying to explain things. So I wrote them down so I don't go all over the place with it. Um, again, I spoke the last meeting on March, March 7th. And uh, my words, my comments are my own. I'm not speaking for anybody else or anybody I may be associated with. Could you state your name? I'm sorry. Steve Falls, Muncie. It's an honor to, to be able to speak, you know, it publicly and that, that type of thing. And I appreciate the, the uh, opportunity. I'm brief my notes and I'm getting old. Uh, I failed to be, re uh, be respectful to other people's my language and tone led to me uh, led to defining the difference in looks of others. I'm embarrassed, and uh, I'd like to apologize for for that. Anybody I offended in uh, the public and, and here and the, the commissioners, and uh, I didn't make a very good showing. It's bought me every sense, and and I don't mean to to do that type of thing. So, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. much. Yeah, thank you very much. It takes a big you. man to make an apology in public. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, uh, we continue to hear rumors in the community of, of activities that uh, are going on. Uh, we heard one yesterday of another area that supposedly is housing illegals. It was checked out. Uh, again, it's not true. Uh, we, we responded immediately as soon as we heard about it. Um, matter of fact, uh, Mr. Fink in the audience is the one that actually checked it out for us because he was, he was the one that the rumor was brought to. Uh, he spoke to the property manager and, uh, and that rumor was dispelled quickly. Again, if you see anything, you hear anything that you think is inappropriate, bring it to someone of authority, and we will check it out. It's very important that that we uh, squash these rumors, and if anything's true, we're going to turn it over to the authorities and let them handle it. Uh, we met last week as the prison board. Um, we are um, looking at the Butler County uh, proposal, and uh, we'll be voting on that. In the near future, the next prison board meeting, uh, hopefully to change the terminology so that we can get ourselves off this website that lists us as a sanctuary county. But at no time, I spoke to the, the uh, council president yesterday, Adam Yoder, and he reassured me that the city of Williamsport has not done any ordinances or resolutions, and neither has the county. And, and that has done, that's happened in other communities throughout the country. That has not happened in Lycoming County, nor I believe it's going to take place. I know this board of directors, commissioners have expressed we have no interest in doing anything like that. And now the prison board is very interested in having this terminology changed so that we can get ourselves off the website. 
But again, we urge the public to please bring forward anything they hear instead of spreading information that may not be true. We ask them please bring it to us so we can have the authorities check it out. Okay. Anything online? Just one. And sir, thank you for being here. Appreciate that. Uh, JP Molino, thank you all for broadcast. I think he means broadcasting. Uh, this. I used to live in Newberry and join the military and they moved me out to Buckeye Land, Ohio. Thank you for broadcasting this. It brings me back home to stay connected. He sounds a little bitter about that Buckeye Land, don't you? Uh, <laughs> it, or I'm guessing, could be envious. I don't, I'm guessing not, but I don't know the guy, but I'm guessing. I, I would ju just to add to what Scott said, just because also because you hear something, you, you can vet it yourself a little bit as to where did you hear it from, and because you know as we're trying to do what's right for the county, um, Jason you know running the chamber and Scott you know as our chairman, you know they could certainly be doing more productive things with their time than chasing down wild rumors. So when someone says to you, hey, guess what I heard. Maybe you should, like, where did you hear it from? And, and we have to be a little more. I know there's a group of people that love conspiracies and they live for that. And, but beyond that, you know, just a little, a, a couple simple questions. Well, who did you hear it from and who did they hear it from? And, you know, you can kind of weigh it out yourself. But it, it is, you know, if there's a real threat, yes. But just because you heard something, again, you know, I don't know how many, how much of Jason's day it took and how much is, I know it took some of Scott's day. And um, there are certainly better things that they can be doing to benefit our community, which is their job. Their job is to benefit the community. And um, instead of just chasing down mob rumors because somebody heard something at the, you know, at the laundromat or whatever. So anyway, for whatever that's worth. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Okay. Uh, hearing nothing, uh, we have completed our agendas. Our meeting will be adjourned and our next meeting will be Thursday, uh, March 21st, 2024 at 10 a.m. right here in this room. Thank you. Everybody have a good day.